And hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. Today I'm going to be breaking down and decoding the Great Pyramid of Giza. I have another pyramid in here that I'm including as well as a surprise, but the Great Pyramid, you know, there's been many, many, many archaeologists and historians you know, people that use geometry, they try to break this down and show you. And I, I mean, I've been fascinated with this topic for a while and these people that break it down. And I wanted to take a stab at it. And I wanted to show you what the mystical arts, these layers, what these will show and what they will tell a story about the Great Pyramid of Giza. So here we go. I mean, I wanted to start off by showing you this. I'm going to be decoding the character Lucifer. And why I'm showing this to you is because I have a very strong suspicion that Lucifer is tied to the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I'm going to show you that. So hang on to your seats. My methods of decoding. Now, if you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I can assure you it will be well worth your wait. Any of you, it will be well worth your time you invest in watching this video. If you're new, just follow the breadcrumbs. This is like putting a puzzle together. It's connecting the dots using multiple layers of the mystical arts and, of course, science because I bring in alchemy into this, which actually is the mystical arts. But nonetheless... The methods are, we start off with numerology primarily, we get an outcome, and we can tie in the cards of illumination, the typical poker deck, the 52 cards plus the joker, they're embedded into nature, 52 cards, 52 weeks, four suits, four seasons. So the pyramid is 21, the 21st card is the eight of clubs, Melania Trump, that's one of her cards by the way. Then we can bring an alchemy into this, the 21st element of the International Periodic Table. We're talking about science now. The 21st element is scandium. Notice its only weight is 44.956. There's a master number 44 there. And then we can also add in the tarot. The old ancient tarot system, which was derived from the cards of illumination. And the 21st card, of course, is the last card in the major arcana, the world card, which, of course, has the four faces of God, talked about in Ezekiel. We can bring theology into this. The four fixed signs in astrology, we bring astrology into this. These cards have a lot to say, and the word pyramid is tied to this card right here. And then, of course, we can bring in real math folks which really doesn't have anything to do with esoteric but we can bring in pi and where the digits sit in the never-ending circle the infinity of zero 3.1415 and so on so all these are connected and that's the methodology that i have discovered and it tells a story and that's what we're going to do today with decoding the great pyramid now what I wanted to start off with first is perhaps what the Great Pyramid is all about. You know, they have the King and Queen's Chambers in there, and of course it was Khufu, and perhaps they thought this was a way to ascend to the heavens and move on to the next stage of life. But nonetheless, alchemy, the real true sense of alchemy, is turning lead into gold. And I'm showing this for a specific reason, but... Notice it's a 47 in Chaldean. And that's really interesting because, as most of you know that follow my work, the word tetragrammaton, the four-letter word of the ancient Israelite God, as talked about in the Bible, it is the God of the Bible. The tetragrammaton is the number 47. Just like Washington, D.C. and White House those words also equal the number 47. Why did they choose that, you know? you got to ask yourself those questions. You owe it to yourself. But nonetheless, is this what this monument is all about? This, you know, it's one of the seventh wonders of the world. So, you know, turning lead into gold. And, of course, I've added silver in here because is this the midway point? 
Is this where our energy is gathered up? When we carry on from the physical avatar that we have back to the, you know, the, the source energy, the spirit and soul that we are. So there's a lot of clues in here. A lot of clues. You know, I mean, this thing goes to a point. You have the capstone or the apex there. And, you know, there's a lot of energy right in that area. Of course, this supposedly had gold there on the capstone. This is made of limestone and granite. That has significance as well. But what I wanted to point out here is the actual measurements of the pyramid. The height is 280 Egyptian royal cubits. I'm going to use that because that was what it was originally derived from. Not meters or feet, but cubits. So it was 280 royal cubits tall, and it was 440 royal cubits as the base. So we have 280 and 440. That's very interesting. We're going to bring pi into that. What does pi have to say about that? Well, this, this website right here, eveanderson.com, you can do your measurements of Pioneer. But what I wanted to show you are the two measurements. 280 cubits was the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And what I wanted to show you is the last two digits in 280 decimal digits past the three point. It's the number 82. And then I go back and I'm going to put in the 440 for the base. And we get the number 79 as the last two digits. I'm showing you that because the Great Pyramid of Giza, again, is it turning lead into gold? You know, I mean, that's the two measurements we got out of pi using these measurements 280 and 440 turning lead into gold i mean you saw the numbers they're right there undeniable you know so there's that first aspect right there having pi the never-ending digits tell us a story i mean i thought this was absolutely mind-blowing that's what that's what this is showing you can actually take all these digits and add them up and compare it to the height of 280 cubits, getting those decimal digits. I'll let you have some fun with that. See what you come up with. So it really all comes down to this, folks. This is what really it, it, it is all about. It is nature. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a, a monument. It is a fixture of nature. I'm going to show how it fits in these four seasons, which is why I love the Cards of Illumination, because four suits, four seasons. Highly accurate. Well, nature doesn't lie. Nature always is accurate and always will tell a story based upon cosmic law. Not man-made laws, cosmic law. So, of course, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Spring, summer, fall, winter. These are the four seasons. And then we bring the clock into this. Because this has everything to do with the Great Pyramid, folks. 12 hours. The two 12 hours. 12 hours plus 12 hours. It's 24 hours. That's one day. And it's embedded into nature. Notice the, you know, the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9. I mean, Tesla said the keys to the universe was 369. You know, I was pointed out by my friend John Petrie that Tesla left out the 12, and I would 1,000% agree. That is the PC left out. That's the 36912, because you need to create a base four system. So here it is with the snake eating its own tail. And this is going to get into the pyramid, folks. The snake wrapped around the clock. And that's all it is. It just it eats the time. And it eats nature. Because nature is cyclical. And then we bring in the yin-yang in here, folks. The black and the white, which make up the light and the dark. I mean, if you bring theology into it, 
The days of creation talk about the light and the dark. You know? It first started off with black, and then let there be light, and there was light. So things started out with the black, folks. Not the light. Started out with the ba- the black. And then it leads us into this right here, which is the figure eight or the infinity sign stuck inside the snake eating its own tail. And this thing, of course, would spin. As nature moves through the seasons, the cosmic law pushes this snake to move with, of course, the black and the white. It just moves. It spins. And this thing just, you know, keeps moving in a circular path uh, circular path using the figure eight what about the swastika you know i mean it has a bad rap because of the germans but if you study the swastika the history behind it has some pretty deep esoteric meaning and there it is laid on top the yin yang embedded into nature very deep stuff. And there we have the actual base of the pyramid. We actually have two triangles as well. You'd have one here and then one right there. But nonetheless, you have your base triangle. And I have the numbering broken all up. The numbers 1 through 12, the 12 hours on the clock, the 12 houses in astrology. What's really interesting about astrology, of course, it starts off here and it goes counterclockwise. But nonetheless, these are the hours of the clock, the houses of astrology. And this is where it gets extremely interesting, folks. If you go into Genesis and you read about the days of creation... There were six, not seven, but six. There were seven days total, including the day of rest or the Sabbath day, but there were only six days of creation. So six, if you're looking into numerology, is the first master number. Of course, it pairs with the nine and you have the yin yang. But the six days of creation is where it's at. So I've circled the numbers on this and one through six when you add it up equals the number 21 remember the word love equals the number 21 the word pyramid equals the number 21 the word saturn equals the number 21 but nonetheless focus on the card so we bring in math and then we add up one through six we get 21 and then we bring in the cards of illumination the eight of clubs is the card that makes up the first six days of creation of course, the club suit means the mind. Clubs means mind. Anybody that has the eight of clubs as their birth card, you know, that's Melania Trump's card, but it means that the person works from their mind. When they use, when they make decisions or when they ponder over things, I mean, we all use our mind, but they will use critical thinking to make their decisions. If you're a heart, You'll, you'll make it from your heart position. You know? So the cards have great accuracy. 21st card is the eight of clubs, matching the six days of creation. Does this tell us that the energy or deity that was designing the universe used its mind? And of course, eight is death and regeneration. That's what the eight means. The death and regeneration. Which I go back here and... We're talking about death and regeneration. This spins. And this snake that eats its own tail is all about death and regeneration. Of course, because, because spring all the way through winter is about death and regeneration. Death and regeneration. Death and regeneration. Everything is cyclical. So we have the eight of clubs, the eight of the mind that created the, that the created earth in the six days according to theology. The 21st card matching the 21 here of the six days of creation and the eight of clubs in the tarot is the world card. 
It's the last card in the Major Arcana. I mean, how fitting that the Six Days of Creation, the ending point, is the world card, which is the four faces of God, the ox, lion, eagle, and man, the four fixed signs, which would be Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, and Taurus. And of course, you have this opening here, which is probably a Vesica Pisces, and you have an androgynous figure going through that. So this means birth, the birthing of a new world. That's why it's the world card, having the four fixed signs. So how fitting. And that's why I'm saying, you know, how can you really look at this and say that the game of life, everything we know, it's is not fixed. It is completely fixed. I mean, I'm supporting it with so many layers. Wait till I continue with this. I'm going to continue to support more of what I'm saying. And I'm going to keep saying the game of life is fixed. It's rigged. It's a software that was written just like somebody writing a computer software. So we have these two cards right here. Keep your eye on this. The first six days, the days of creation, the eight of clubs. What about the numbers seven through 12? Well, then we get into that. We add up seven through 12 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 equals the number 57 remember this is the fall of man by the way you know you have spring and summer and then you have fall the fall of man into the winter the colder constricting months the black and what's really interesting about this folks is lucifer when you do his name through alchemy it ends up becoming the number 57. We're talking about the fall of man. The constricting part. Nature is expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. That's all it is. Well, the 7 through 12 is contraction. It's going inward. And it's tied to Lucifer. Notice the 57th card in the tarot deck is the eight of swords it's a card of being trapped or limited and if you tie that to contraction of the winter the colder months it makes a lot of sense the counterpart to the five of swords in the cards of illumination is the eight of spades swords means spades And this is the 47th card, by the way. Tetragrammaton equals 47. But look at what we have, folks. We have a pair of eights. Days 1 through 6, the creation, eight of clubs. Days 7 through 12, the eight of spades. These are the two masculine suits, by the way. Clubs and spades are masculine. Hearts and diamonds are feminine. I mean, look at these outcomes. Eight clubs, eight spades. When you say that through numerology, you get a master number 77. I mean, that's, that tells us a story right there. You can link that to the 77th element, Iridium, which is tied to the rainbow, the seven colors of the rainbow, the light spectrum, let there be light and there was light. If you've seen my video on the Vesica Pisces, I mean, I showed the one through seven. That's our eyes, and that's tied to the 77. So what I wanted to point out here is the actual Great Pyramid of Giza. This is an overhead shot of the actual pyramid itself. And this was profound when I found it. Notice that this is the darkest shade of the pyramid. This obviously is when Probably the sun is at noontime, at high noon, or right about that time, and it's shining down and it's creating shadows on this pyramid. And look at how accurate this is. That's, this is why a sundial works. But this is winter time, and this would be winter on the pyramid. And then you move into spring and it gets a lot lighter. And then you move into summer. Notice how light this side is of the pyramid. It's the lightest side. It's the opposite of the darkest side. I mean, this was absolutely mind-blowing when I found this. And then you have the fall 
autumn, the fall of man gets darker and then it gets completely dark. So there's your four seasons, folks. And this pyramid completely tells a story with the numbers and the clock and the cards, as you know. But, you know, this was, this right here was really, I could have put this at the end of the presentation, the icing on the cake. Because it, it just, it's just perfect. It's nature telling you what's going on. Four seasons. You know, and winter is completely dark. And then we go back and we look at, you know, what perhaps Lucifer owns, the fall of man, 7 through 12. Which is the darker side. Look at where the, where the actual yin-yang sits. I've placed it here between one, the dots, the white and the black dots, because I feel that the days of creation, 1 through 6, and then you have the day of Sabbath, the rest day, which is a day of contemplation, you know, and then you have your death and regeneration, but these would be where the two dots would be. You know, 12 would be Pisces, and it would be really surrendering to new perspectives because you're moving down into the number one again, into Aries. Aries is the ram, the fire starter. He's got to have a white dot there to carry the energy back into spring through summer. So I feel like the yin-yang is very fitting right here in the way I've positioned it. Now, yes, you could put the 12, the um, the white dot and the black dot in the 12 and 6 position, but I feel spring, really the new year, folks, it doesn't begin in January 1st. We celebrate death, which is absolutely horrendous. Actually, the real celebration of the new year, of course, is in the springtime when Aries the Ram comes out. That's a no-brainer. And then the fall of man in the seventh sign of Libra, the scales, because you got to weigh out what you're going to take with you through the death. I mean, it's a perfect situation going on right here. The one through seven. Six days of creation, the Sabbath day, the one through seven. Seventeen, you know, YHVH, as in yod heh vah that equals the number 17 in the Chaldean. So there's significance to this positioning aspect right here with this yin-yang inside of nature, inside the pyramid. So what about this right here, folks? I'm going to be bringing music into this. I mean, what is the Beatles? One of the top groups in the world back in the 60s. What do the Beatles have to do with the pyramid? They had a song they wrote in 19... 64, I think it was, or it came out in 64. I think it was 64. Is it 64? But nonetheless, it was called Eight Days a Week. And of course, Ron Howard came out with a movie called Eight Days a Week. What do they have to do with this? Well, you know, folks, keep in mind there are eight sides to a pyramid. If you see the little line here, see the line there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's actually eight sides to a pyramid. Which is why I feel the Beatles were talking about the pyramid. I mean, they're very esoteric. The Beatles itself, I mean, if you study the Beetle, it's tied to the element zirconium, the 41st element. Go study that element. But let's go into this because this has everything to do with the pyramid. Eight days a week. Because it has a lot to do with the musical scale. You can fit the musical scale in the pyramid. There's the eight notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then starting back over with A. Notice the double A right there. And notice where it sits. 11 and 1, as in 1, 1, 1. And the A is a pyramid. Two pyramids. Notice the notes here. A through A. Completing a circuit. It equals the number 27. Just like the word current. Like currency. Like the current of electricity. Spinning around nature. The current. That's where it's at, folks. And we get into the eight days a week. This is what I feel. And this is why I say the game of life is completely rigged. I don't know how else to really put it. You know, I mean, do these guys sit down and figure this stuff out and write their music?
based upon the methodology I'm showing or were they just being used to write their music? I mean, obviously there's some conscious things going on, but look at these outcomes I've gotten, folks. Eight days a week, the actual title for the song, which came out in 1964, 64 codons in our DNA, 64 squares on a chessboard, it equals the number 143. That's a direct tie to the element neodymium, which is used to make magnets. It's magnetic. And this is the actual picture that the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to use for neodymium. See the pyramid in there? There's eight circles around there, eight days a week. And the kicker in all this, folks, here is the latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza, 29 degrees north, 31 degrees east. When you add up 29 plus 31, get out your calculator, you're going to get the number 60. So, I mean, yeah, is your draw, jaw on the floor? Because it should be. I mean, how else are you supposed to describe this? How are we supposed to explain this logically? Unless these people know. You know, did these guys study the Beatles and say, yeah, you know, we're going to put a pyramid here and it's going to be 143. I mean, you know, even Keanu Reeves, the guy who played Neo in the movie The Matrix, you know the, the name Neo? How did he get the name Neo? Well, it's right there. Neo. Charles Keanu Reeves, his name through alchemy, ends up being the number 143. I mean... The Wachowski brothers who wrote The Matrix, they chose the guy to play it, but did they go and look at this methodology and decide, hey, this guy equals 143, we're going to call him Neil, that's going to be the character, and his, you know, his birth name comes out to 143. How is that possible, folks? How is that possible? There's only one odd logical explanation. The game of life is fixed. It's already been written, the software, before each and every one of us ever got here. Which then makes you question the whole aspect of free will. Nonetheless, let's keep going. Here's the actual release date of this song, Eight Days a Week. It's December 4th, 1964. There it is right there. It has a numerology of 27. The 27th card in the Cards of Illumination is the Ace of Diamonds. Notice the letter A. It's a pyramid. It's a freaking pyramid, and then there's two pyramids, one on top of another, one upside down, one right side up. That's what a diamond is. And then the big kicker is ace diamonds is the number 88, which is the number of time travel. Marty McFly, DeLorean, Back to the Future, hello, 88. Is this pyramid all about time travel? I mean, the king and queen's chambers they put them in there hoping they were going to move to the next level in ascension that was the whole purpose of the pyramids or a big piece of it i mean here's the guy that they made the pyramid for khufu it's called the great pyramid of giza but it was actually the pharaoh khufu i mean look at this his name equals 27 Matching that of the 27th card of the Ace of Diamonds, matching that of the actual release date of eight days a week from the Beatles. Matching that of the 88. Matching that of the word current. The current of the universe. The vibration. The frequency. It's all connected, folks. These, we're talking thousands of years ago before these cards and the English language ever came out. Yet here we are, connecting the dots, putting the puzzle together, and quite frankly, there's no other logical explanation for it, of how these connections happen. I'm almost finished with this. Here is the, you know, I, I lived in Las Vegas for a while. I absolutely loved it. The Luxor is one of the landmarks, of course, because of the bright light that sits atop this. And, you know, they tried to remake it after ancient Egypt. And this is really, I mean, you know, again, are these people sitting down and choosing or is the universe choosing for them? Because, you know, Luxor, they may have chosen that name 
It's linked to Thebes, if you study the Luxor on the name, but it's a 23 and that's related to the word crown. That's the 23rd letter is the letter W, which is related to illumination. That's the element tungsten. Well, look at the address of the Luxor, 3900 South Las Vegas Boulevard. See the 39? That's related to the element yttrium. And that has only one atomic mass or weight, which is 88, which again is the Ace of Diamonds. So you see how these things are all connected. You know, present day, thousands of years ago. Yet still here we are connecting the dots and showing without a, a, a shadow of a doubt these are this is all just fixed how about the actual light itself it's the strongest beam of light in the world right there and the big standout is it's 42.3 billion candela like as in candles the word when we say 423 just like it says there we get the numbers 174 and 61. I'm showing this, folks, because of these two elements it's connected to. You see, folks, Lucifer, the light bringer, the light bringer, Lucifer, Lu, this is one of its elements. If you go study Manly P. Hall and others that talk about Lucifer, you're going to come up with the number 174 or 741 or 714. But it'll say from the esoteric that Lucifer's numbers are the one, the seven, and the four. Now, did they choose this number on Wikipedia on purpose to match with this, to match with this? That's a lot of work to tie all these together like this. When we use the Chaldean, we get the number 61. That is the element Prometheum. And if you know the story in ancient Greek, Prometheus is the deity that stole the fire from the gods and gave it to the humans kind of similar to the snake giving the knowledge to eve to the human eve didn't steal anything just told her you positively will not die so is lucifer part of these two energies right here the story of prometheus or prometheum and then ludatium I mean, I got tons of data on this showing this to be true. A tie into Lucifer. Notice also the lamps to make this thing so bright comes from 39 xenon lamps. Yeah, of course it has to be 39 because it's tied to the element yttrium. Notice, you know, it is a letter Y which is in the shape of a snake's tongue. That's what a snake's tongue looks like when it comes out of its mouth. So you see how everything is connected when you use these layers and you really observe them as a whole. And we're talking about possible time travel. So I think this is my, I got two slides left. So what about the tarot and all of this? Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth with this, but notice I've placed each tarot card, 1 through 12, all the way around the pyramid. And, of course, the big standout is the hangman in the 12th position, the 12th hour, the clock, clock strikes midnight, because this is a card of surrendering. Because you're done with the 12 hours. You must surrender to the next 12 hours. And the reason why I have the number 13 at the very apex or the very top of the capstone of the pyramid is because this that's where this card would sit you see when you surrender to new perspectives you must die death must ensue and if you were to place another pyramid on top of this one where the point would mesh up with this one well then you'd have 26 which is the total number of our alphabet so there's very, very importance for all of this. And the very reason why 13 is so important. I mean, a lot of hotels skip the 13th floor, but, you know, it, there's nothing to fear about it. It's a very powerful, powerful number. It's actually the makeup of the magician and the empress. The magician slinging his magic through the empress who's giving birth to things. But it's through death and regeneration, breaking off the old ways, making way for new ways. 
surrendering in the 12th position. So the last slide I wanted to show you folks is this one right here. It's the four fixed signs that are talked about in Ezekiel 1 verses 10. So now we can bring theology into this again and show that these, the 2, the 5, the 8, and 11, it's Taurus is the second sign, Leo's the fifth sign, Scorpio's the eighth sign, and Aquarius is the eleventh sign. Two, five, eight, eleven. Notice that they equal through numerology the number 89. That's a direct match of 25811. 25811 equals 89, just like Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius equals 89. That's a direct match of the Gnostic demiurge called Yaldabaoth, which is very likely to be the yod heh vah -Heh, which is very likely to be a part of Lucifer and Jesus. you got to do your research on this, folks, because it has great significance. These numbers here, by the way, when you look at your calculator or your phone, they sit right in the middle. The middle path. The four fixed signs, as talked about in Ezekiel. So if you like your Bible, well, the Bible is just nothing other than astrology. The Bible talks about the four fixed signs. It's the middle path. It's not the left-hand path. It's not the right-hand path. It's the freaking middle path which is the path of neutrality. It's the path of non-judgment. The middle path, which is probably where silver comes into play because black and white blended together makes gray. The middle path. So, that's pretty much what I got. What is it that you saw during this presentation? I could have been a lot more in depth with this, but I wanted to try to keep this as short as possible. But look at these tie-in folks. How do you deny this? And then how are you else to claim some kind of logical conclusion on all this? You know? I mean this spells it all out. And I'm not even an architect. I'm not it I'm not studying, you know, ancient architect. I'm not studying things from a historical standpoint. I'm using Things that we use in, in everyday life, speaking spells, numerology, and the musical system, and then bands and things that are labeled inside the matrix, and then nature. Nature always tells the truth. Everything that we're showing here is embedded into nature, whether it's man-made or not, because it's I'm showing the tie-ins here, folks. So there it is, folks, the Great Pyramid of Giza decoded. What is it that you saw? A lot of information, but I'm going to leave it right here, turning lead into gold. That's exactly what we're all about, ascension, folks. That's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Reality. Thank you so very much for your support and watching.